you're all set. Go ahead. All right. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to the September 12th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Barnesville Planning Board. My name is Steve Robichaud. The Planning Board public hearing will be held tonight at 7 p.m. by remote participation methods. Alternative public access to this meeting shall be provided in the following manner. The meeting is televised via Channel 18 and may be viewed via the Channel 18 website at streaming85.townofbarnstable.us slash cablecast public site. Real-time access to the planning board meeting is available utilizing the Zoom link and telephone number and meeting ID provided below. Public comment can be addressed to the planning board by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID provided below. The link is townofbarnstable-us.zoom.us slash j slash 86993841814. The phone number to dial in is 888-475-4499. And the meeting ID tonight, 869-9384-1814. Applicants, the representatives, and individuals required or entitled to appear before the planning board may appear remotely and may participate through the link or telephone number provided above. Documentary exhibits and or visual presentations should be submitted in advance of the meeting so that they may be displayed for remote public access viewing. Application materials may be accessed by contacting Karen Herrand at karen.herrand at town.barnstable.ma.us or calling 508-862-4064. And at this time, we will introduce our board members and staff members, uh, starting with Bob. Uh, good evening, Bob Twist. And Mary. Good evening, Mary Barry. And Tim. Good evening, Tim O'Neill. And Ray. Good evening, Ray Sexton here. And my name is Steve Robichaud. And staff, if we could introduce ourselves, uh, Jim. Good evening, Jim Kupfer, Senior Planner, Planning and Development. And Kate. Good evening, Kate Maldonado, Assistant Director of Planning and Development. And Karen. Good evening, Karen Heron, Administrative Staff, Planning and Development. Great, thank you so much. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20. I will now inquire whether anyone else is taping this meeting, and if so, please make your presence known. Seeing none, we will continue to the public comment portion. This is for public comment unrelated to any agenda item here this evening. And Sarah, do we have anyone for that general public comment at this time? I don't believe that we do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Which leads us to our first agenda item this evening, which is an a and &R. Tim, if you could take that. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a approval not required plan for Wilkins Lane Properties, LLC, care of New England Development. Uh, we have submitted a request for an approval not required plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan-35 Wilkins Lane, Assessor's Map 296, Lot 39, Hyannis, Massachusetts, prepared for Wilkins Lane Properties, LLC, Dash 75 Park Plaza, Boston, Massachusetts, 02116, telephone 617-243-7843, dated August 16th, 2022. Great, thank you very much, Tim. And um, let's see, uh, this is not a public hearing. And uh, we'll now go to the applicant to provide an overview of the plan proposed. Uh, Attorney Ford, is that you? Uh, it is, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mike Ford, representing the applicant and owner of the property, Wilkins Lane Properties, LLC. They're an affiliate of uh, New England Development. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what's before you is a plan to reconfigure two lots that currently exist on Wilkins Lane, lots two and three. Um, lot two currently is about 25 acres and, and lot three is three acres. The proposal is to create um, new lots two and three. Um, lot uh, two will have frontage along Wilkins Lane. Wilkins Lane and some of the board members are already aware is a, uh, sub is a road duly laid out under the subdivision control law by the town of Barnstable and fully constructed. Um, 
And uh, the other lot, Lot 3, uh, will take its frontage from both Wilkins Lane uh, and Kids Hill Road. Um, the, uh, the, the property has been the subject recently of a Cape Cod Commission review and has received an approval uh, under a development agreement. And this reconfiguration of the lots uh, was approved also um, under the development agreement and is anticipated. Lot three, just for informational purposes, will be the site of uh, the recently approved um, Hanover uh, residences um, that has been approved uh, again uh, by uh, the Cape Cod Commission. So this proposal meets uh, the provision under the subdivision control law, chapter 41, sections 81 L and P, in that it is a division um, of attractive land into two lots, both of which um, contain the necessary frontage along a road, which has been previously laid out um, under the subdivision control law. The only thing I would bring to the board's attention, Mr. Chairman, is that um, since filing, we have filed a, uh, a, a new uh, plan, uh, which only has two changes on it. Um, you might have noticed if you looked at the uh, plan we filed, the hatched area running uh, along the boundary of the two lots to the north um, is subject to a uh, grading and construction easement. The plan we filed said that um, that uh, easement was going to be recorded herewith. In other words, when this plan uh, was recorded. The easement has subsequently been recorded, and so we now have the recording information. So all we did was to change the, uh, the mylar uh, to include the recording information of that easement now. And um, the plan now bears the date of September 6th um, because that's when the modification was done to add that title reference. So any motion the, the planning board makes on this, Mr. Chairman, should refer to uh, the plan with the same title, but with a, a date of September 6th, 2022. Um, Brandon Carr is on from Depredi Engineering and representatives of uh, New England Development are also on if there are any questions from board members, Mr. Chairman. Excellent, thank you, Attorney Ford. I appreciate that overview. And uh, just to summarize and be clear, uh, any motion on this item um, should be read from the agenda uh, using the September 6th, 2022 date rather than the August 16th, 2022 date. So thank you for that clarification and uh, go ahead now and look to uh, comments from uh, board members. Uh, Bob, comments, questions? I'm good, thanks. Bob and Mary? I'm also fine, thank you. Great, thank you. And Tim? I'm all set, thank you. Thank you, Tim and Ray. Uh, just one question. This is the site that previously was gonna be developed for a medical facility, if my memory serves correctly. Now we're changing it to a resident, correct? It was previously zoned uh, as part of the medical services overlay. Ray, you're correct. The uh, town then created a special subzone uh, over this particular area, uh, which authorizes the residences that are now being uh, proposed and will be constructed. Thanks, Mike. Nothing else, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you, Ray and Attorney Ford. Thank you. And at uh, this time, we would seek a motion on this item. Uh, I would like to make a motion to endorse the plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan 35 Wilkins Lane, prepared for Wilkins Lane Properties LLC, drawn by Depreet Engineering, dated September 6, 2022, as an approval not required plan. Thank you, Tim. Do we have a second? This is Mary. I'll second that. Great. Thank you, Mary. And all those in favor? Bob? Aye. Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. And the motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Attorney Ford. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item, which is a special permit. And Bob, if you don't mind uh, taking this one. Thank, thank you, I'd be pleased. Uh, this is a special permit number 2022-003. Uh, Mr. Ronald uh, Bourgeois, owner, our child, LLC, 
233 to 239 Bonstable Road, Hyannis, Mass, 02601. The applicant proposes a change of use. As a result, the applicant is requested relief from section 240-24.1.11A, four, little a, in accordance with section 240-56 for parking reduction by providing 51 parking spaces where 78 are required. The site is located in Assessor's Map 310, Parcel 170, zoned Hyannis Gateway and Wellhead Protection Overlay District. The subject property is within the Hyannis Village Zoning uh, District. This is a um, new uh, hearing. It is a public hearing. And if it's convenient, Mr. Uh, Chair, I'd move to open the public hearing. Excellent, it is. Thank you, Bob. And a second on that motion? This I'll second, Mr. Fight. Chairman. There you go. All right, we'll give it to Ray. Thank you, Ray. And all those in favor, Bob? Uh, aye. And Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. The public hearing is open. And at this time, uh, it appears we have the applicant on. Welcome, and uh, please take it away. Well, thank you. Um, so this is a building where um, it's a big building. There's a first floor and a second floor. And um, at one point, it was an old um, um, furniture store. And then someone bought it, and it got broken up into different pieces. So now, uh, carpets of Cape Cod occupies a good portion of it and they have a, a, a portion where they have customers look at their carpets and they, they sell them and they have their employees but the majority of their um, space is used to house their carpets and to cut it and that type of thing it's more of a, um, a place where they you know they do have a showroom um, they have employees and they have a few um, uh, retail customers but it's not like a real busy retail business um, I've actually purchased carpets from them prior to my ownership of this building. So they have a limited amount of what they really need. It's, and it's always, I've never seen any overcrowding of pockets. So that's that's one occupant. The second occupant on that first floor was previously occupied by Aaron's. Um, and they had been there probably for 15 years or so. They recently, coincidentally, just moved out. Um, they, their business plan has changed. Um, and they rented, um, it's like a rented center type business is what they they did once they moved out um this party um express approached me uh to take their their prop their um uh, space and they predominantly rent like tents chairs tables party products and they house a lot of their their party products in in that unit as well it's kind of a uh, warehouse scenario and they do have a, a showroom where they they show their wares. They've got like cups and teas and themes for birthday parties and weddings and that type of thing. Um, so they really just have a few employees. They have like two or three employees. Um, and then they store their stuff and, um, you know, they might have a retail customer too. So they're really not using a lot of space as well. Then there's um, this Gigi's Beauty, which is what kind of triggered this all. And they're in um, a unit that was formerly an accountant's unit. Um, and, um, you know, when they were going for their permits, you know, they, they, they had to, um, accommodate the pocket and this kind of triggered the whole situation. Um, we think, we don't know really how many units to how many spaces they're going to use, but they, they're probably going to need a good 10 to 15 spaces, at least 10 anyways, between their employees. And they're going to probably have a consistent, especially on Saturdays, I would imagine they'll have a consistent, um, turnover of clients that are going to come and go. And then on the second floor, um, there's a restaurant accounting solutions company. And they really, um, they do accounting specifically for restaurants. Um, and they probably have 10 employees. Um, and then they have, like I saw Ted Zambellis there the other day. I saw um, Joe Jamiel, the two, um, pro, you know, restaurant, popular restaurant uh, owners. And so they have, um, their restaurants come and go. And, um, you know, so they have some clients so that's who's that's who occupies the building. Um, we we had a proposal where we had like forty two or forty three spaces with what's there. Um, I happen to um, th this one of the buildings is in my name and the other one's in um, an LLC that I'm the principal behind. 
Um, I, I'm not sure which is which. I'm sorry. But I have a, a half acre lot right next to it at 139 Grove Street where I could um, very well, and you can make it a condition of, if, if you guys are in agreement, you, 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 the board seems to be in agreement with my proposal, I would make it a condition where we could put an easement for nine or ten spaces. And I think it's in your packet where you would see that proposal, um, and we would uh, make that official. And that would be um, in perpetuity with the property going forward. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping to do. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I hope that gives you a good little overview of what we're trying to do and what's existing there now. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that overview. And um, I'll go ahead and kick it off myself. Um, just to clarify, you mentioned uh, currently you're able to offer uh, 42 spaces. Is that correct? I could, yeah, I got to look the exact. I'm going to look at that exact number. Um, it's, I'm sorry. Currently, yes, it is. Um, it's 43, actually, sir. 43. 43. Okay. And um, so with the nine additional, that would bring it to? 52. 52. Okay, understood. Now, you know, listening to your presentation and, and, you know, preparing for this meeting, reading through the notes, it seems that it's your estimation that uh, even with, with, with peak demand at each tenant, you would potentially see a maximum of 45 um, parking spaces being needed. Um, that, that correct? That's correct. And that, that's, that's being aggressive, but you never know what, you know, what happens down the line if business uses change. <laughs> but right now, the current businesses that are there, really, they don't really use a lot of spaces. Understood. Understood. I, I, you know, driven by the building many times. I stopped by there recently to, uh, just to, to get a look at it before this meeting. And, um, you know, in my opinion, and I'd love to um, see what the rest of the board thinks about this, but in my opinion, for simplicity purposes, um, I, I would seek to see if possibly the board would be interested in offering the special permit for uh, the 43 spaces rather than the 52 um, for a couple reasons. Um, one of the reasons is, you know, I really love to see that Grove Street site um, not clear cut, you know, to make room for more spaces uh, to leave those native trees in place. Um, and, and for, you know, simplicity purpose, I think based on what's there and what I've seen for how many spaces are typically filled, um, to me, 43 seems sufficient when a maximum peak is estimated at 45. Um, so that's, that's my, my thought. And, uh, would love to see what other board members, um, think and, um, go around, uh, Bob questions, comments. Yeah. I just wanted to, um, follow up on that. Mr. Am I pronouncing your name right? By the way, is it Mr. Bourgeois? You got it, sir. Good job. Great. So um, if we go with 43, you think that, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's going to be adequate? I do, sir. Yes. Okay. So um, then my, my other follow-up question that is, um, when we propose these special conditions, which are listed on page three of the uh, staff report, should I amend paragraph four to put in a specific number? You mentioned nine spaces for the easement on 139 Grove. But now it doesn't specify any number of spaces. I, I guess you would cross that out, sir, right? If we were going to go with just the 43? Well, I guess that's a follow-up question. Right now it's proposed a special condition for an easement at 139 Grove for parking, but it didn't specify what number of spaces. Oh, it's nine. Yes, it is. Yeah, so should I put nine in there? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Well, unless it changes, that's what I'll read at the appropriate time. Okay, good, thank you. Mary, thoughts? Um, I just have a question. If we go with that, I like the idea, Steve, what you had said, there's no reason a clear cut property if we don't need to. Um, but is the building commissioner going to approve that as with the, what would it, without the nine additional? I guess that would be my question for you, Jim or Kate. I'm not sure if that's a requirement by, by the building commissioner when they reviewed it. Right. So that's how uh, Mr. Bourgeois uh, uh, came is before the planning board. Uh, he has gone through site plan review. The building commissioner did 
uh, state that in fact uh, he was short parking in terms of the, the uses and the new use that uh, that he mentioned. Um, and in order to move forward, he would need to seek a, uh, a reduction in parking. So the request here tonight is actually for, I think it's 51 or uh, uh, parking spaces, which is already a reduction from the 78 that are required. Right. Um, you know, it is certainly the discretion of this board if there is reason to reduce it further or to, as, uh, as the chairman mentioned, you know, leave it as existing due to due to the current uh, uses um, and limiting impacts in the neighborhood. You certainly are well within your rights. And that permit would then be handed to the building uh, commissioner uh, to, to demonstrate that he has met his parking requirements for these uses. And I guess my last question, thanks for the clarification on that. The, my last question would be, because I think we have it in the findings, that this um, reduction is for the businesses as cited. Is that correct? Um, business uses as cited in this application. Right. So yes, the findings would likely need to be modified slightly. And I can take a look at that while you guys are um, discussing, if you like. Okay. Yeah, I took a peek at the findings. It seems to me that we edit number two from 51 to 43 and we'd strike number three and we'd strike number 8A. Just in this initial glance. Um, and then if, if that seems like the right thing to do, then we just have to look at the conditions and what adjustments to make there. So I'm in favor of your recommendation, Steve, um, as long as it adheres to what the applicant is um, applying for now. I mean, if obviously the business has changed, we need to revisit it. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, we can we we could add that in. Um, and Tim, questions, thoughts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I fully agree with uh, trying to make a plan work with the property in the parking provided as is, and uh, having to not interrupt uh, another lot next door and clear cut it, you know, where it could be used for something else or can remain green space, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, and I also agree with uh, Mary just that, you know, if any of the existing businesses uh, change um, type from retail or office or anything else, uh, I think it would be appropriate that this board uh, takes, another, takes another look at it. So just making sure we cover that going forward. But um, no, other than that, I think it makes a lot of sense. Great. And um, Ray, thank you, Tim. Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, a, a quick quick question is, um, how big is the lot on Grove? And, and the reason I'm, I'm asking is, um, uh, if uh, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I support your idea, too. I think 43 would fit the bill. Um, I visited the site today. Um, I'm just wondering um, if, if um, the... Uh, 139 Grove, or it looks like it's an extension that can be accessed on Mulberry. But um, at any rate, um, uh, if if we don't require the additional parking, can we perhaps get um, uh, some kind of agreement that it'll be left as a green space, or is it big enough to be developed for something else? Yeah, and I guess before you answer, I'll mention two things. Um, I um, Hopefully I didn't miss, misspeak. Um, only a portion of that property would have to be cleared for parking, not the whole property. So I just want to clarify that. Um, uh, Mr. Bourgeois, could you speak to, um, you know, that site and, and what possibly the future use might be? Certainly. That site is a half-acre site, sir. And where we proposed um, the easement, it would go over its... The dimensions are uh, something like 70 by, I'm just looking at them right now, um, 100. It's it's approximately 70 by 80, 80. It's about 70 by 230 feet. So we're all, and that's, so it's 70 depth, you know, from, and it's 230 feet on Grove Street. And if, in fact, we gave this easement, it will only really affect like 24 feet of it. 
So that would still leave, and you know, with the setbacks and the way you need to, I guess, drive the cars in, because a lot of the, 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 the um, some of the parking would still be on Mulberry. Um, so it would still leave basically 200 feet of the lot available for another potential use. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I uh, I wasn't uh, I couldn't get a, a grip a, a real good handle on just how big. So you know, that's a a piece of property. And uh, uh, the thing is, you would be, if you're not required to have an easement and have parking on there, then you'd have a whole lot to develop for something. Right. Minus those 24 or 30 feet, whatever it is. Right. Well, unless we say you don't need to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's all for me, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Appreciate it, right? Thank you. Um, you know, it seems like have some consensus on this. Um, uh, Jim, just to kind of run through this with you real quick, it seems like we move forward with this motion uh, with the findings. We edit number two from 51 spaces down to 43. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have, I have 42 uh, as existing conditions. Oh, I, okay. All right. Um, Mr. Bourgeois, we have uh, 42 in our official packet as the number of official spaces. So um, we would need to use that figure as the amount that we would be um, allowing under the special permit. That is correct. Okay. All right. So, Jim, uh, just continuing on. So, again, edit number two from 51 spaces to 42, strike number three, and strike number 8A, and then add an item saying that this board would need to revisit if any use changes. Thank you. Again, uh, may I recommend revisit if any use changes that would increase um, parking requirements? I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That would work. And that that would be a condition, just to note that I, we can incorporate that into a condition. Got Good catch, Jim. And then it seems to me, um, seems to me un under the. Uh, Conditions, we would simply change number three from 51 to 42 and strike number four. Uh, Mr. Chair. Is that you, Bob? Yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just looking at the draft findings. Uh, yes. Uh, finding number two on page two of the uh, staff report, when we modify the 51 to 42, um, your suggestion was that we then strike paragraph three and paragraph 8A. Um, but once we modify paragraph two and we make a special condition about the uh, the easement for the nine additional places on 139 Grove, that's what that leaves paragraph three of findings and paragraph 8A of findings still relevant and appropriate? Well, I... I don't believe so, only because we wouldn't need the um, the easement at the abutting property. I thought we were keeping the easement. Well, the whole purpose of reducing the number from 51 to 42 was so, so that we wouldn't need the easement. Um, the easement was going to add nine spaces to bring it from existing conditions 42 up to um, the required amount of 51. All right, so then the proposal is to go with a total of 42 places and no easement to increase it by nine more spots. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And 42 again is existing conditions. So really it's just to kind of leave it where it is because we feel it's right. sufficient. I got that. Thanks. Okay. When I'm screwed up, when I read it, just correct me. <laughs> no, 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 no problem at all. And then again, the conditions, um, if use changes that would increase parking requirements, that, that would be a condition as well as um, number three, change 51 to 42, and then we can strike um, item number four. Correct. Okay. Bob, well, uh, entertain a motion if, you, if you'd like. Uh, well, I need to file a motion to close the public hearing, I believe, if there's no other um, members of the public who want to speak. Yes, sir, let me check with Sarah. Sarah, do you have any members of the public seeking to speak on this item? Not at this time. Okay. So then I move to close the uh, public hearing, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Bob. And I'll second. I'll second that. This is Mary. All right. Thank you, Mary. And all those in favor, Bob? 
Aye. Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. Public hearing is closed. And um, any additional uh, board questions or comments before we seek a motion? Okay, uh, seek a motion on this item. Okay, so then um, as a preliminary to the uh, motion to adopt the proposal, I propose the uh, following draft findings, which are outlined on page two of the staff report dated uh, September 9th, uh, 2022. Draft finding number one, the property location is 233 to 239 Bonstable Road, Hyannis, Massachusetts. 233 to 239 Bonspel Road, Hyannis is shown on assessor's map 310, parcel 170 in the Hyannis Gateway District and Wellhead Protection Overway District. Number two, the applicant, Ronald Bourgeois, and the owner, Our Child LLC, seeks a special permit pursuant to section 240-24.1.11 A4 little a, in accordance with section 240-56 for parking reduction by providing 42 parking spaces where 78 are required. Draft finding number three is stricken. Finding number four, the planning board finds that the issuance of the special permit is consistent with the design and infrastructure plan and that the development meets the following criteria. A, the development pro provides for or supports mixed use development where appropriate. B, the development provides for the minim minimizing of curb cuts and driveways on Barnstable Road through a shared use for parking purposes with the direct abutting property. Five, the application falls within a category specifically accepted in the ordinance for a grant of a special permit. Section 240, dash 24.1.11 a4 little a4 allows the planning board to reduce on-site parking requirements by special permit six after an evaluation of all the evidence presented the proposal fulfills the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance and would not represent a substantial detriment to the public good or the neighborhood affected seven a site plan has been reviewed and approved by the site plan review committee. The conditions of informal and formal site plan review shall be incorporated by references as conditions to this special permit. Eight, lesser off street parking is shown to be adequate giving special circumstances, including subparagraph A is deleted, subparagraph B, characteristics of use invalidating normal methods of calculating parking demand. Nine, the proposed repairs, alterations, and or expansion are not substantially more detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. Mr. Chairman, I propose that we adopt those findings as just read into the record. Excellent, thank you very much, Bob. And do we have a second on this? This is Mary, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mary. And all those in favor, Bob? Aye. Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. And the motion passes. And do we have a motion on the conditions? Yeah, uh, well, yes, I have a motion to approve with conditions special permit 2022-03 for, for 233 through 239 Barnstable Road, subject to the findings just uh, voted and subject to the special conditions set forth on pages two and three of the staff report dated September uh, 9th as amended as follows. Um, special condition number three shall read this special permit modification shall allow for the reduction of parking required. The applicant shall provide no less than 42 parking places where 78 are required. The change is to strike 51 and substitute 42. Uh, further, the proposed special condition number four is deleted in its entirety. So the motion to approve is subject to the conditions one through three and five through eight. 
uh, as just modified from the staff report dated uh, September 9th. And Bob, do you want to add a condition for use change that would increase parking? I'm sorry, the change for? Uh, we would talk about adding a condition for if the use changes that would increase parking, it would come back before this board. So the special condition number nine is if the use should change, the applicant must come back before the board for further permission. Excellent. Give me a minute. I'll write uh, that out. Got it. Uh, Jim, go ahead. Jim already has. Yeah, I, I have it. I have it, Mr. Twist. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if I may just recommend if, if the use changes would increase parking requirements at the site. Um, and then uh, just a one more recommendation uh, of condition number one. Uh, references the plan itself and um, perhaps language to the effect of the subject probably shall be maintained and the parking shall be located as shown on the record plans entitled uh, by, by BSD group demonstrating existing conditions or something to that effect um, so that we understand the 42 are the existing conditions um, and, and we're not looking at the additional nine. Yeah, you're saying using the word maintained rather than the word improved and uh, including the term existing conditions. Yes, please. Oh, so that's, that. a, that's a new special condition nine is read into the record by Jim. Yep, got that. Good. And then Jim, Jim recommended just a, a tweak, Bob, to number one. Um, just changing the word improved to the word maintained and mentioning that we are right. sticking with the existing conditions. So uh, special condition one would read the subject property shall be maintained and the parking should be located as shown on the record plans entitled plan of land 235 Moscow Road dated should this be September 6th? Um, no, no, that's fine. That date's I got fine. September. I got two dates in that one, September, then July in paragraph one. Oh, yeah, you're right. That looks like a typo. Uh, Jim, should that be? Uh, I think that's going to be July 19th. Jim, can you convert that in the first condition? Good catch, Paul. It is July 19th. July, so that, before the words July 19th, We'll strike the word September. Got it. Thank you, Bob. Excellent. Okay. We have the conditions on the record and we are looking for a second. This is Mary. I'll second that. All right. Thank you, Mary. And all those in favor? Bob? Aye. Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. And the matter passes. Great. Great job, Bob. Okay, moving along, uh, Mr. Bourgeois, thank you very much. And uh, thank, thank you for all your good faith efforts and uh, your work on this. Uh, good luck with the, with the property. Thank you, Mr. Robichard and everybody else. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night. Uh, thank you. Um, Kate, do you have an update on the uh, LCP for us? Thank you, Chair Kate Maldonado, Assistant Director of Planning and Development. Um, I would like, love to take this opportunity to update uh, the Planning Board on the Local Comprehensive Planning Committee. At this time, the committee working closely with Barrett Planning Group, who is the LCP consultant, is working on an engagement plan. The objective of the engagement plan is to provide further guidance to the committee as we work um, towards our next step of going out in the field towards outreach. So the engagement plan will provide guidance for different levels of outreach, whether it's in a table event or a community event, as far as handouts and some suggestions for dialogues, as well as tools like an elevator pitch. pitch. Again, this is really to help to um, lead us towards our next effort in outreach. Um, I, with the engagement plan, we'll also be working on developing a calendar to um, list off some events, again, to get out in the field. Really looking forward to this next step. So we'll have the engagement plan and the calendar to discuss at the next meeting. And that meeting will be Thursday, September 22nd at 6 p.m. in person at the town hall at 6 p.m. in the hearing room. And then just as a general reminder to planning board members and members of the public, we'd love for everyone to stay up to date. 
you can stay up to date by visiting uh, the website that we've developed at barnstablelcp.com. And you can also sign up for our newsletters, newsletter from that website. So right now, really working on that engagement plan, um, developing some lists of events that'll help us with the outreach. So just teaming up our committee with the tools and some um, guidance to get out in the field. Great, Kate. Thank you so much. And uh, any, uh, yeah, Jim, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, if I, if I may, real quick, just adding to uh, Kate's with the LCP, we're also uh, working diligently with the housing production plan and the housing needs assessment, which is running uh, somewhat concurrently. And uh, we should be meeting shortly uh, with their team. We have a, a second consultant, as I think I mentioned previously, who's sifting through all the data right now and uh, working uh, in response to not only the update of the housing production plan, not only the, the understanding of our needs assessment, but really the uh, the cause that has been brought forward by this board to really understand the metrics. And and uh, we're hopeful that we can have, um, you know, a pretty robust response here in the near future. Um, I think many of you may have participated in the recent housing production plan um, uh, focus groups, and a lot of good came out of that, it sounds like. so. Uh, nothing, nothing definitive at this time, but we're hopeful, uh, you know, as the pro process moves along, we're going to have some really uh, good fact-based plans that can uh, help us produce, you know, housing in, in the near term. Great. Thank you, uh, Jim. And Jim, next week on uh, Wednesday the 21st, I have something on my calendar for the Community Housing Forum. Can you talk about what that is? One second, let me look back at my calendar and see which one that one is too. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of meetings going on. Let's be on Wednesday, you said? Uh, yes. I think so. I believe that's an, an update um, that the consultant's providing on the housing production plan. It was just, I know they were double checking the final location. So I was trying to pull up the town's calendar. We can certainly pass around confirmation. I believe it's at the Barnstable Adult Community Center. At, um, and this is again, an opportunity to provide an update as far as the results from those focus groups. Um, but we'll certainly follow up post this meeting to make sure that that's uh, squared away. That's great. Yeah, that was my intent was just to say, let's get those uh, details out to the board. I'll be in attendance if anybody wants to meet me over there. Um, I think it would be a good thing to check out. Ray, take it away. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, uh, what are the details of that? Because I'd like to attend as well. Um, sounds like we have a date but and maybe a place, but not a time that I heard. Yeah, that would be great to get those details from Kate. And uh, it's a nice big venue, so they can handle plenty of people. So good to hear. Um, Thank you. Any any other board questions, comments on the LCP or the uh, housing production plan before we move along? Okay, correspondence from uh, DEP Notice One Fifty Three C View Ave Osterville Nick Williams maintain existing stone revetment. Um, looking for a motion to approve the August twenty second, twenty twenty two draft minutes. This is Mary. I'll make a motion to approve the August 22nd, 2022 draft minutes. Thank you, Mary. And a second. Uh, this is Tim. I will second. Thank you, Tim. And all those in favor, Bob? Aye. And Mary? Aye. And Tim? Aye. And Rick? Aye. And myself, Steve Rochot, votes aye. And the minutes are approved. Uh, let's talk about future meetings for a second. Um, it was brought up by uh, multiple members of the public that September 26th is an important holiday. And uh, with that in mind, um, we do have two items on the agenda that evening. So we do need to um, hold our meeting. However, I propose that we continue those two items uh, on the 26th to the following week, which is October 3rd at 7 p.m. Um, simply to respect uh, the holiday. And um, just want to see if there's any board objections to that adjustment. That works fine for me. I think it's fine for me. Great, yeah, I'm not seeing any objections, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I think there's might be an error on the, uh, 
uh, agenda. It says uh, the, uh, the next meeting would be October 10th. I believe after that new October 3rd meeting, we won't meet until the, um, hold on one sec, until the 24th. Do I have that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Because I was not going to be able to make the 10th. So that's good. Okay, okay good. Great. So just to recap, we will um, convene our meeting on the 26th. We'll continue the items to the 3rd. And after that, we'll meet on the 24th uh, for us each meeting at 7 p.m. Prior to adjourning, any um, questions, comments, uh, discussion? Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. And uh, second. I'll second. Thank you, Mary. All those in favor? Bob? Aye. Mary? Aye. Tim? Aye. Ray? Aye. And myself, Steve Robichaud, votes aye. The meeting is adjourned. Awesome. Thanks, right. everyone. Have Thanks, a good guys. night. Have a great